Hello test takers, welcome back to Exam Prep Solutions and today we have another video. It's going to be covering the statics topic as a whole. So this is the introduction to statics and a bit of review on statics. Statics is a very important section on the FE exam and really is sort of the building blocks for a lot of other topics that show up on the FE exam. And it is a topic that a lot of people struggle with if they don't learn the fundamentals correctly. And really it's just going to come back to bite you in the end, especially on an exam like the FE exam, if you don't understand the concepts. And so that's what this is going to be, just a nice review of statics. So buckle up, we're gonna do some sample problems. We're gonna go over some concepts here. So what is our agenda? We're gonna do an introduction to statics, the topics that are on the FE exam, some of the basic concepts of statics, and then three different example problems covering statics and some of the concepts that we learned today. So what are the topics on the FE exams for statics? So there's eight to 12 questions from the FE exam on statics. So you can get anywhere from eight to 12 questions. So 10 being the mean, that's close to 10% of your test is going to be on statics questions. And like I said, it's gonna feed into a lot of other topics too on the FE exam. So having, a cru having an understanding of these static topics is going to be really important for your entire test taking process. So these are just the uh, topics that are outlined on the FE exam. There are seven. We have resultants of force systems, equivalent force systems, equilibrium of rigid bodies, frame and trusses, centroid of area, area moment of inertia, and static friction. That's a lot. We're gonna go over some of the earlier concepts here in this video. So what is our introduction to statics? Well, it begins on the FE reference manual section, page 107. You can start reading some of the concepts there. And like I said, it's really an important topic to master for passing the FE exam, and it's the building blocks for many other topics on the exam, such as materials, structures, and soil mechanics are all going to pull from the statics topic there. So really, instead of thinking about it as 10% of your test, it really could be up to a third of your test is in a way quizzing you on your basic knowledge of statics. And we're gonna cover all the statics topics here um, in, on a later date, but we're just doing an introduction here in this video. So if you have any questions, you should leave it in the comment down below. Like I said, if you have questions about the statics topic. First, we're gonna get into resultants of force systems. That was our first topic here. So a force is a vector quantity, meaning it has direction and magnitude, it is defined when it's a magnitude point of application and the direction are known. In the vector form of the force comes in F equals uh, F, the X direction, force in the Y direction. Okay, you don't need exactly know that in and out. You may get one vector question on the test, but more of it how it applies to some of these engineering principles is important. So first thing we're gonna look at is the resultant of two dimensions. So how do we find the resultant force of a force system? Well, we're going to wanna sum all the forces in the X direction, sum the forces in the Y direction, square it, and then take the square root and that's how you're going to be able to find the resultant force of the n amount of forces in a force system. And I'll show you what that looks like. You can also find the direction uh, of the angle by taking the arc tangent of the sum of the forces in the y divided by the sum of the forces in the x. It's going to make more sense here coming up. Then we have moments or couples. And the moments are calculated by multiplying the force by the moment arm length. And determining which direction this moment couple is causing the structure to rotate about is very important. And I'll get into that here. So Really, when it comes to summing these forces and taking the moments of these different forces on a system, you're, the way you're choosing your coordinate system and your direction system is going to govern what kind of answer you get. And in most cases, it actually doesn't matter. As long as you keep it consistent, you will get the right answer. Now, in most cases, for the x direction, the positive x direction is going to the right, the positive y direction is up, the negative y direction is down, and the negative x direction is to the left. That is pretty much the common force system that people use. So that's the one I would highly recommend. For moments, it just depends on which direction that structure is going to rotate due to that force. So if you were to take a ruler, for instance, and balance it on your finger, and then you apply a force with your other arm, what is that, or what direction is causing that ruler to rotate due to the force? So for example, if you have the ruler, it's bouncing on your finger, and then you take another finger and you apply a force on the right side, well, that's causing the moment, this first direction here, plus to rotate in that clockwise direction. If you put the force on the other side, it would cause it to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. And so you choose that as the positive direction. And I'll explain more what that means. But this is a really important thing to understand because it's really going to play into being able to solve all these different statics equations on the exam. And so here's what I outlined here. If we have the force of 10 kips in the center of this beam here, if you were to take the moments about A, for example, point A is on the left, that 
force in the middle is causing the beam to rotate clockwise, right? And so if we were to sum the moments, and we assume that the moment going clockwise was positive, then that would be the positive direction. And then for the B side of the beam here, it'd actually be rotating the other way. So it just depends on where you set up the positive and negative situation. We'll get into problems here. So here's the first example problem. Find the resultant force of this system here. So we have 50 newtons on the left here, 75 newtons on the right, at 30 degrees and 60 degree angle on the axis here. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we're gonna to wanna to sum the forces in the x direction. Now think about it here. Both these forces have forces going in the x direction. One would be going in the negative direction, the 50 newton and the 75 newton in the right direction. But we can't just put 50 newtons and 75 newtons because it's at an angle, right? So we need to calculate what is the component of that force. And it's just gonna be simple Pythagorean theorem or using our trig identities to understand what that force actually is. So we have the 75 newtons times cosine of 60 because that is the angle that that is at to find the x component of that force. So that's gonna equal a positive 37.5. And then to find the negative direction, we're gonna go 50 newtons times the cosine of 30 because that is the angle and we get negative 45.03. So then we sum these x forces together and we get negative 7.53 newtons is the sum of the forces in the x direction. We do the same thing for the y, except we're using sine because we're trying to find the y component of these forces. And so you follow that process, you can sum the forces in the y direction as well. And then we find the resultant force by using that earlier equation we went over, right? Square the force, sum them together, then take the square root. And so we're always gonna get a positive answer because even if you have a negative as one of your result as one of your summed forces, squaring it is always going to make it positive. So we find the resultant force by squaring it, take the square root. 90.26 is the resultant force in newtons. If we take the arc tangent of that, then we get negative 0.03 degrees actually is the direction of that force. So that's how to find the resultant force, the direction, and sum the forces in the x the y in the x and y direction. That's a really simple example problem here. Now we're going to get in a little more complicated. Finding reactions in a beam system. This is a very common FE exam problem. This is gonna involve summing forces and using our moment arm application to solve this one. So a lot of the times you'll be asked to find the reactions in a beam system. Here's what a beam looks like. Now typically when we do a beam problem, we're getting this sort of side view here. This is more of a three dimensional view and it gets a lot more complicated than that. But essentially with statics, we're looking at the basics here. This is what a beam looks like from that side view. When you apply a force to the beam, let's say you're placing the beam on a building, right? Then you're placing a floor on top. There's going to be forces on that beam. And that's what those arrows are referring to. There's forces going down. It's causing this beam to bend and it's going to be creating moments. And so we need to find what the reactions are or the forces on either side of this beam that's keeping the beam up and not letting the beam just sink through the ground, right? Um, so now here's our example problem three. Find the reactions in this system. So. A sub y is a reaction or force that is keeping the beam up, and B sub y is also a force keeping the beam up. Now, how do we know how much the forces A, Y, and B, Y are? We can't just sum the forces in the y direction because there'd be too many unknowns. We'd have A sub y plus 5, or A sub y minus 5 minus 10 plus B sub y, right? One equation, two unknowns. We can't solve that. Well, we can use our moments, our moment application, to find the B sub y by taking the moment about A. And when you take a moment about a point, you're not gonna take into account that reaction because if there's a force applied at the point where you're taking the moment, there's no rotation about that point. And so here is the sum of the moments about A. We take the distance or the moment arm distance that's five feet to that force of five kips that's going down. And that is going to be one of our forces. And so we're assuming that if the force is causing the beam to go counterclockwise in rotate or go clockwise, excuse me, in rotation, that that is a positive moment. So don't get confused between a negative force and a, pos and a positive moment, okay? So five kips times five plus 15 times 10, because now we have 15 feet, minus 25 B sub Y. And why is that a minus? Because the B sub Y reaction is going to be causing the beam to rotate in the opposite direction, which we have identified as our negative direction. So the five and 10 kips are causing the beam to rotate clockwise. That's what we have selected as our positive direction. And B sub Y is causing it to rotate counterclockwise, which we have um, ordained it as the negative direction. 
we get 175 equals 25 by so b sub y equals 7 kips up reaction so now we can sum the forces in the y direction we have a positive 7 minus 5 because we're just looking at the direction of forces now minus 10 plus a sub y a sub y is back into the equation because we're just summing the forces in the y direction we're not taking moments anymore uh, and that will equal y, uh, a sub y equals 8 kips and that does work out because 8 plus 7 minus 5 minus 10 15 equals 15 so that equation does work out so as our quick statics overview if you have a question please leave a comment down below we do have a free guide called how to solve any fe exam problem in five steps that is free in the description box go ahead and download that one i hope you got something out of this video please ask a question like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the